the first thing I spot about Korska is how beautiful it is. And then there's the smell. They say you can smell Corsica before you see it when you're approaching it from the sea. It is an island covered in herbs and, and the extraordinary aroma of myrtle wherever you go. What I'm hoping is it's also an island covered in wild boar. Well, I'm in luck. I am staying at a hunting resort on this Mediterranean island and it has lots of wild boar. Despite the Jurassic Park style gates, they assure me that the 6,500 acre domain d'Ortolo is not fenced. On the estate itself, it's practically pork soup. I am here for two kinds of driven hunting. The first is in the Cork Oak woodland on the coast, and they are using a local hunting dog called a Cursinu. The second is in the mountains, which rise sharply up from the coast, and there they use hounds. Owner of the estate, Paul Canarelli, tells me about the origins of the Cursino. Le Cursino is a chien qui est très complet. The, the Cursino is a very complete dog. That means that uh, his eyesight, as his smell, is, is very good. Uh, originally, the dog was used uh, by the shepherds uh, to, to guide uh, the, the sheep to the different fields, but also to protect. Uh, the, the, the herd of uh, whatever would, could happen and also they are very very friendly dogs and they're today uh, since several uh, hundred years also used for the hunting also because they are very very quick determinate dogs. They need to be quick. The reason for that is the extraordinary speed of the boar. The ones I see on the estate roads are grubbing around happily. The ones on the drive are rocket powered. My neighbour, Roland Zobel from Hunter's Path magazine, is quick enough to shoot a boar. So do they, they go a bit faster here than you? Oh more? yes, they are. They are fast and they're coming very like an explosion out of the bushes. So it's a very great experience. You can hear them when they approach, but you never can tell when they pop off the bushes. The man who put this trip together is Laurent Huard from Magic Safari Lodges, which prints a catalogue of the best hunting lodges in the world. Um, this is a resort that operates also, of course, in the summer, uh, without any hunting, of course, a lot of fishing also, but also family time. Uh, in the winter, as nobody's actually really travelling uh, to Corsica to come and swim here in the winter, uh, as the owner has been passionate about hunting for the last 25-30 years, he decided with the rest of the estate to turn it in into a hunting ground. And I think they've done a quite unique job with uh, mixing as well the tradition of, of the Corsican hunt as the, the driven boar as we know it today uh, everywhere else on the continent. The next day, the hunting party moves to the mountains. The Corsinus stay in their kennels and the beaters bring out legia hounds of various breeds. Instead of lines, the guns are dotted across the hilltops and valleys. The gamekeeper, Constant Boulard, explains his strategy. We have what, one group of hounds that way, one group of hounds that way, one group of hounds that way, so, and one behind us. So all of beaters and the hounds, they walk in the same places, different places, and like that, all the, the dogs will, will drive and will run after balls a bit everywhere. And we've got hunters a bit everywhere, on the drive actually, on the way of balls, in the middle of the bushes. Well, maybe it's because I now know what to expect, but this strategy works for me. It's the end of the drive and I'm still absolutely flying. It was 15 minutes ago. The boar came out of nowhere like boar do. Luckily for me, it wasn't a very challenging shot. He walked up, bang, went down, bang, another safety shot. That was a, I mean, that was a few seconds, but for the whole of that drive, for the whole two hours of that drive, is what I love about boar shooting, driven boar shooting, is that the, the countryside is turned up, the scenery, everything, the volume, picture, you're absolutely on the edge of your seat all the way through it. It's my, it's my desert island sport. And looking at him, he's a, Good looking boy for a for a Corsican pig. He's not a bad size and a lovely pair of Donald tusks there. The good thing about a press trip is there are plenty of experts who can tell me about my boar. 
Well, I think it might be at least five, six years old, maybe older. It's very difficult to judge here because the wild boar are a lot smaller um, than than um, on the mainland. Um, you would have to look at the molars, how worn they are and at the front teeth, um, how worn down they are, because the tuskers um, is very are very difficult um, to judge because if you look at the size of the boar and um, the tuskers, it, they look big here, but on a on a boar at that age in Germany, for example, they would look tiny. Okay. So that's a very difficult so, thing so to take. You're, the saying, you're saying my tusker is tiny. Is that what you're saying? Um, no, not actually. Well, <laughs> size doesn't really matter, does it? Thank you for confirming that, Nina. There is bird shooting here, both driven and walked up. The topography is perfect for partridges and OK for pheasants too. There is walked up pheasant, partridge, snipe, woodcock, duck and even thrush and blackbird, though apparently crows are protected here. And there is always the possibility of stopping to enjoy a barbecue that the kitchen has provided specially. Now that is nice, even if the weather is unusually wet. The Ortle Valley is deeply luxurious. You can book two days of shooting and three nights for eight people in a villa for between two and three thousand pounds per person. If you fancy it, contact the estate via mertily.com. <laughs>